Hmm. I, I know your question here was rhetorical when you asked uh, mm -hmm. why is there a, a pride flag, I, th I think mm -hmm. you meant. I'm not sure if you used that exact yeah. word. Right. Yeah. Um, I guess, why do you think there is? Well, it's to bring awareness to an identity, right, mm -hmm. um, of who the group of people are, and much like the American flag, you know, rally behind a yeah. symbol, right? Yeah. It really comes down to what is your source of truth? For us, it's the Constitution of America, right? And then what are your preferences and definitions behind it? We came up mm. with a flag with 50 stars. We have preferences to have the flag up on government buildings, on pins. Mm -hmm. um, so you have to find the source of truth, right? And then So what I was dying to say yeah. uh, when um, when you first walked up and you started talking about how long I've been doing this, et cetera, yeah. et cetera. Whoa, whoa uh, yeah, you got the this, chair this, sunk yeah, a little bit there. <laughs> yeah, wood chips aren't yeah. the best place to put these kind of chairs, huh? That's all good. You get the, there, it gets there. really solid, though. We're all good now. We're, We're all sure. good. Um, so I was going to ask if you had seen the interview with uh, Jerry, and you said you had seen it. Yes. So that's awesome. Yeah. Um, what, what did you think of that, actually? What were your I, thoughts? Yeah, I think it was, I mean, I saw highlights, I didn't watch it through the entirety, but I think it, it, it was good. It asked fair questions, allowed him to share his side, but also it wasn't just softballs right. where somebody, you know, an average person in the street could um, come up, ask him those questions, and then he could give his honest answers. Okay, awesome. And uh, what I'm doing here is called street epistemology. Have you ever heard that term before? I uh, have not until you hinted at it in your... In the Jerry yeah. uh, video, where is it similar to street evangelism along the lines of sharing? Um, it's kind of the opposite in okay. a way. So yeah. street evangelism would be, at least I would define it. Sure. Or maybe you could define it differently. Sure. But it's where you're trying to take an idea, a mm -hmm. belief that probably the preacher has, yeah. and trying to kind of pass that on to whomever is listening, right? Sure. Yeah. And with street epistemology, it's kind of the opposite. Mm. It's about um, challenging the beliefs of the interlocutor yep. and then seeing if they have used a reliable method yep. to determine what they believe is true. Sure. Very nice. Okay. Cool. Awesome. So um, I guess you're, you're down for that, right? Yep. Absolutely. Right. Absolutely. Awesome. Sorry. Is it okay if we... Yeah. Yeah. You know, um, we're just going to shift over a little bit so we don't Sorry. catch you. Yeah, no no you're problem. Good. Thank don't you. worry about it. Okay. Not a problem at all. So, what I thought, if you're comfortable with it, mm -hmm. if you just want to kind of want to read your post, and then sure. everybody who's watching knows what we're actually talking about. Absolutely. And um, when you're reading it, if you do want to expand it all, feel free to. I'm not going to handcuff mm -hmm. you to these words or anything. Absolutely. So. Yeah, so, I mean, it's, uh, it's June of 2022, um, as it has been for the past few years, or maybe as late as Bill Clinton's uh, proclamation back in the 90s, uh, June was... Uh, declared Pride Month and has become more and more prominent, I would say, probably especially in the last five years. Um, so in June of 2022, um, I early in June, I made this post um, specifically um, to June 1st, which kicked off Pride Month. I said, on this day, we are mindful of respect for all, but also of science where God made only two genders. We need to support all kids but without punishing them to question who they are, pushing them to question who they are, or change their gender by age 16. So, I mean, just off the bat, um, we don't want to force kids who are just growing up, who are trying to figure out who they are, to question who they are without parental consent, as the next line goes on to say. We can't say that parental consent is needed for everything, minus gender change and brainwashing that's happening in schools. Books in grade school are borderline porn, a push to change identities and a celebration of drag queens as a child's identity should not be accepted as the norm. Let boys be boys and girls be girls. No, men can't get pregnant, unlike the emoji says. No, men beating women in sports is not uplifting to women, as latest um, college swimming you may have seen. 
Yes, we all crave an identity, but it cannot be rooted in what we are seeing today. Let's use June and every month to promote care, love, and support for all boys and girls. Let's not use June to change genders or the definition of marriage between a man and a woman. Let's take pride in who we are as the image of God. Let's take pride in loving those around us and loving those around us. Let's take pride in our identity that should go beyond a physical change or behavior. And finally, let's truly practice inclusivity and diversity and not twist those words to fit a political narrative from our friends on the left who use such words way too selectively and narrowly. Okay, thank you so much. I, I appreciate you reading it out. Now, everybody's on the same page uh, with what with the post and what we're talking about. And I guess uh, I have a couple things yeah. uh, specifically with regards to the to the post that that I uh, would, would want to talk about. So with regards to the second paragraph here where um, you say we cannot say that parental consent is needed for everything. And I think I'm on board with you there. Mm -hmm. um, uh, minus gender change and brainwashing that's happening in schools. Mm -hmm. So I, I guess um, it would be your belief that gender change and brainwashing is happening in schools. Is that correct? Did I, did I understand mm -hmm. that correctly? Yeah, a push for that. Yep, that, that oh, would be correct. Okay, a push for that. Yeah, for um, sure. So it's not happening yet? I think it's happening, yes. It's happening okay. to an extent and it's being pushed more and more to define it more specifically. So basically, you need parental consent, you know, to have a sick day, to go on the field trip. You can't smoke till you're a certain age, you know. You can't drink till you're a certain age. You can't drive till, till you're a certain age. But, hey, if at seven, Johnny wants to change the very body he's in, mm -hmm. he can just go and get some hormonal pills without the consent of his parents. Hmm. And that's problematic. Okay, okay. okay. And that's something that you're saying there's a, a push for that's happening right now? I, I would um, say so. Okay, okay. Yeah. And um, I guess with regards to the schools, mm -hmm. uh, some of that is happening as we speak right now? I, mean, I, would, I would imagine. I mean, I okay. see time and time stories online where parents, as we've seen over the last year, especially in the Virginia governor's election, parents came out and said, wait a second, they looked over the shoulder of their kids and said, what is my son and what is my daughter reading? And they are discovering material that is not only borderline, it's very explicit and pornographic to an extent. Hmm. Some of these parents go in Colorado and they complain about these books. And when the parents starts reading what's in the book, they mute that school board meeting so that parent can be heard. So hmm. if this content's good enough for a grade schooler, why are we muting the parent at the school board meeting in Colorado? Hmm. So yeah, just... okay, sure. I, I guess, can we, um, I guess, do you have an example of this, um, of what exactly this material might be? Um, sure. I mean, from what I've seen, these are mostly books okay. or could even be homework assignments to say, hey, which sexual positions do you prefer? Mm -hmm. Which ones do you think would be good? Or okay. in books saying, hey, you know, what could be your gender? Are you truly comfortable in who you are? Instead of focusing on history, that's the brainwashing part. Instead of focusing on history, okay. focusing on budgeting, focusing on so many other things, career, success, right? We are taking these kids' brains who are just developing and we're pushing them to their limits, beyond their limits to a point, mm -hmm. and saying, oh, Johnny, you should take those pills that sex offenders take and stop hormonal growth on your body to change your gender. And it leads to a place, speaking of minors, it leads to a place of now saying inclusivity and diversity is also taking what was once called a pedophile, somebody who molested children, speaking of minors in schools, right? And now they are to be called minor attracted persons. So mm. we've started from a good thing where it's inclusivity and love and diversity in my post, respect for all, being mindful, I'm all for that. But we slowly have snowballed into this progression of fourth graders being tested in their favorite 
sex positions, mm. preferred things of that sort. And I mean, you, you need almost need a PhD to address somebody correctly nowadays because it was LGBT, LGBTQ, LGBTQI plus. Yeah. It, it's very difficult. And I think it comes back to identity. We all ser- search two things in life. We search for purpose and relationships. As far as relationships, that's who we are based in, what's our identity based in. And it should be in so much more and give co- these kids time to develop instead of saying all there is to life is to discover who you are sexually. That's about it. That's about it. And if you want to be bi or that or that and just explore in this world of sexuality, that's all there is to life. Hmm. I think that's really limiting these kids. I hope you don't mind that I'm taking a few notes. Please do. Okay. Absolutely. Yeah. It just keeps me on track. Absolutely. So, okay, so it, this kind of actually bled right into the other thing I wanted to talk about, I think. Um, the other thing that I did want to talk about was, uh, you say, let's not use June to change genders or the definition of marriage between a man and a woman. Mm-hmm. So I think you kind of actually kind of went into that a, a little bit, perhaps. Mm-hmm. Um, so, okay, a few of the things that, that I noticed that you said, mm-hmm. um, you, you said that, like, the schools possibly teachers i think you may have implied Mm -hmm. are saying like johnny you should take these pills Mm -hmm. um is that kind of like a universal thing or is it just uh, some kids or like yeah by promoting these things in curriculum sure kids would be curious and you know you know they may try to cope with maybe depression or different challenges and maybe they think that pill is the solution maybe Mm. johnny being susie is the solution right okay and so the availability of such pills i don't think teachers are coming in saying for lunch all of you take two tablets it's not right that extreme certainly but when we again that snowball we open the book we open the curriculum we start doing homework on, on preferred sex positions and preferred pronouns and really just stretch the limits of these kids young developing brains you know we say it's inappropriate to be you know at a strip club for minors but then we have you know in in texas we have these kids at a strip club where where they're not necessarily stripping but these are drag queens performing and these kids are giving them tips encouraged by the parents and they're all celebrating and if the parents want to do that sure do it for your bachelor party but don't bring kids into the environment let the kids play soccer bring them outside um, that confusion, overwhelming, that's leading to depression. That's leading to this pressure and just overwhelming thoughts of how do I fit in? How do I be accepted by everybody? And as you can see from this post, you can't <laughs> be accepted by everybody. And um, so in June, to that paragraph that you mentioned, mm-hmm. let's June in every month, every month to promote care. If the LGBTQ plus community wants to be part of society and included why do we have a separate floor for that community at uwgb at that campus why do we have a separate flag why do we have a separate month why do we push separation and disunity when we're calling for love unity and cohesion but we are at the same time pulling and segregating those groups of Separate and separate equal is not a good thing, as we've learned, right? Yeah, right. right. So, um, and then I'll touch base on my thoughts on marriage between a man and a woman. Sure, it's legalized, but in some mm-hmm. court cases, Plessy v. Ferguson, not all laws are good laws, right? Mm, okay. Hmm. I, I know your question here was rhetorical when you asked, uh, mm-hmm. why is there a, a pride flag? I, th- I mm-hmm. think you meant. I'm not sure if you used that exact yeah, word. Yeah, right. Yeah. Um, I guess, why do you think there is? Well, it's to bring awareness to an identity, right, Mm -hmm. Um, of who the group of people are, and much like the American flag, you know, rally behind a symbol, right? It really comes down to what is your source of truth? For us, it's the Constitution of America, right? And then what are your preferences and definitions behind it? We came up Hmm. with a flag with 50 stars, we have preferences to have the flag up on government buildings, on pins. Mm-hmm. Um, so you have to find the source of truth, right? And then from that source of truth, you take, you make definitions and then you create preferences, right? So if your source of truth is, hey, you can be any gender you want, that's a source of truth. So behind that, mm. we almost need our own country. We need our own flag, 
rainbow, right? We need our own communities, our own floors on college campuses, and build it off from there. So hmm. source, of, source of truth, definition, and preferences. I can say my source of truth is the Bible. My preference is uh, their, their separation of church and state, I'm aware. Mm -hmm. um, but my preference is a pro-life flag is put up uh, in October, right? Okay. So that's my preference. And my definition is based on my source of truth, with, which is the Bible, where God says, I knew you in your mother's womb. You're fearfully and wonderfully made. I knit you together, right? So, so we can, you know, do this in circles all day. You know, the, the LGBTQ community has said the rainbow flag and month of June, this defines all of love, all of inclusivity, all of joy, all of anything to do with love. And if you stand anything, say anything against or stand away from this, you will be defined as a bigot. Hmm. It's amazing. They took their own source of truth, their definition, their preferences, and if enough people say it loud enough, then the rest are bigots, which is exactly contradictory because if you're truly inclusive and diverse, you are part of that community no matter what. And so this post, this post aims to say, what is your source of truth? What is your definition of your preferences? And if you have these preferences, great, but I want to speak truth and love. Because, and people will argue, well, those are your preferences. Sure, and those are your preferences. And so here, I am not saying these people are bad people. There's something wrong with them. Because okay. for me, my source of truth is the Bible. Mm -hmm. and that's between their heart and God's heart. I cannot legislate or legalize or push, not that I could, I'm not elected in Congress, right? right. Uh, or the Supreme Court. But I would never push for that. Um, but at the same time, I want to speak truth and love of like, hey, here's the truth, and your identity can be in Jesus Christ. You can find hope in Jesus Christ. Mm -hmm. And I can't push religion on them, but, you know, if, if, that, if that surgery fails them, if that relationship, um, whether lesbian or gay, fails them, and they're on the brink of depression and suicide, I want them to know that they're, like for anybody else, whether straight or, you know, yeah. bisexual, for anybody, that there is a hope beyond physical identity, beyond our possession identity that's rooted in Jesus Christ. And he's always there for us. He has our back and he loves us. So my message here is truth and love. I get it's controversial. Yeah. Um, yeah. But that was that paragraph there <laughs> yeah yeah i got you i got you. a okay. lot there thanks for being patient with me <laughs> no problem that was uh, i'm just glad to be having this conversation i think a lot more be... than the facebook post right i mean yeah. i'm so yeah. glad you're doing this thank you um okay so i i wrote down a few things mm -hmm. one thing that kind of stuck out to me was um your, your preference would to have like a pro-life flag mm -hmm. and um i'm, I'm wondering Let's say we got the American flag in the middle, mm -hmm. then we have two flagpoles. Mm -hmm. Could we put both of those flags up? So American flag in one and the pro-life for the month of August? Pro-life and the, uh, I'm sorry, I wasn't clear. American flag in the middle, yep. pro-life and uh, the pride flag. Sure. Okay. Absolutely. Let's do it. Okay. Yep. Absolutely. And the, and the nativity scene below it next to maybe, you know, <laughs> somebody else's, um, you know, the somebody else's. Uh, maybe a Buddhist statue, right? Okay. So, okay. yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. Because the city of Green Bay is over 100,000 people. Mm -hmm. And city council is made of 12 people who represent about eight to 10,000 people per district. So for a mayor to come in and say, based on my source of truth, based on my definition, and based on my preference, this bad boy is going up. Mm. I would say... Not all 100,000 people or the 12 and that elected officials mm -hmm. are on the same page there, right? Mm, yeah, so yeah. Chris Weary asked for, in October, for the life flag to be flown or the nativity scene. You know, that was my post to be put in. So, yes, I, I would love that. If, okay. we, if we could do that, that would be great. Okay, great. All right, I, I think, so you said a source of truth mm -hmm. and... That's kind of what street epistemology really wants to find, yeah. all right? So, or yeah. at least on each individual basis, not as a whole. But anyway, um, so you say your source of truth uh, is the Bible, mm -hmm. and um, I understand that's what you're saying. Mm -hmm. uh, and then you said 
a source of truth for, I think you're referring, I didn't actually write this down, but no, yeah. I, I think you were referring to transgender individuals, mm -hmm. and you mm -hmm. said their source of truth is, mm -hmm. uh, I'm not sure what you said, I said something about uh, their gender preference? Mm -hmm. Yeah, gender something? preference, okay. or maybe what okay. schools are teaching now. What schools are teaching, okay. Um, okay. Or what their friends are doing at school, and you know, in June everybody's doing it. Um, side comment, right? You know, the other eleven months we hate on Wall Street and greedy capitalism, but in June when these car these companies from Mayo to Gayo, right, they market it and put the rainbow yeah. on it, then we sure. we eat it up and we buy it mm -hmm. all up. But other eleven months, screw Wall Street and how evil you are. Mm -hmm. So I mean, a lot of this marketing, like, let's be real. Come on, folks. I mean, let's 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 be real. Some companies may have good intentions, but they're profiting off of June and Pride Month big time. Okay. Uh, but yeah, so their yeah, so their source of truth could be their friends, it could be their parents, it could be an awful experience. Maybe, mm. heaven forbid, they were assaulted or raped by the opposite gender. I, I I have you know a former neighbor and a friend in whose lesbian wedding I was an usher and I helped out and when I was in high school, you know, her brother her brother assaulted her, and so. She met a female companion and had a lesbian wedding. Mm -hmm. Now, mm -hmm. does my preference agree with that? No, but I get where she's coming from. And so her source of truth is that men are wicked in these, not, not oh. all, but in the situation. So it was a traumatic experience. It was a traumatic experience. Okay, Absolutely. Gotcha. Absolutely. So my heart went out to her and I may not have agreed with that ceremony, but I helped out. I helped them mm -hmm. usher it and do the planting of a tree in their backyard um, because I may disagree in the preference and definition. But I have no hate for them. I have no hate for them. I have a lot of respect for that. Yeah, I Thank respect you. you for that. Absolutely. Yeah. Okay. Appreciate that. I'm wondering, though, if... Do you think that someone can not have a traumatic experience or anything else uh, psychological, I guess you could say, yeah. and still be gay or trans? Mm -hmm. That's possible? Yeah, I, I, you know, that's the hard part about if God created all of us, why did he create some of us to, you know, want to prefer to be the other gender or yeah. create new genders yeah. um, or maybe even be born with both body parts, right? There's cases of that mm -hmm. where, yeah. you know, Intersex uh, yeah, they too. have. Yeah. And, and to me, those moments are, I realize that we live in a broken world and I, and I realize I'm a sinner and I live and I realize that we live in a corrupted world where mm -hmm. God's perfect creation and its design, Adam, a male, took Adam's rib and created Eve out of the rib mm -hmm. to be mm -hmm. a female, his companion partner. That was perfection and purity but then sin came in because adam and eve did disobeyed and ate from the fruit and sin came in and it's it's tough because that wasn't god's perfect design mm. and there are non-traumatic experiences and people are born in that way yeah, yeah and that's where i don't want to shut the door of the church to them i don't want to hate on them mm -hmm. it's between their heart and god mm -hmm. so i want to not necessarily i don't want i want to be there for them as an individual. I don't want to say, oh, let me encourage you and let's go to some drag shows or get some of these books to promote more of it. It's like, okay. I'll meet you where you are because God does the same thing. He meets us where we are. Mm -hmm. But at the same time, if you choose, if you choose, you know, here, here is the hope in Jesus. Here's a relationship that you're going to have in Jesus. And out of that, you know, should come should come a realization, like for me, you know, in when I make mistakes and sins, any sin is sin, you know, whether you um, choose to be with a different gender in a relationship, or you lie, or you look at somebody lustfully, or anything of that, sin is sin. God doesn't say, oh, well, heterosexual sin is less than homosexual sin. Sin is sin, right? Mm -hmm. And so the key for anybody there is to be in a fallen world, to do a 180, a, a repentance of the actions or the sins, and then pursue God more. And so to me, when I look at the Bible, if the Holy Spirit is truly prodding and convicting us, we would re recognize what those things are that are inconsistent with God and His Word, and we want to do a 180. So again, I can't force people to do anything, mm -hmm. um, but I want to meet them where they are and have the doors of the church open. Okay. Um, not promoting the acts necessarily, but but love the person. Okay. Okay. I hope that gives a better context. I think so. Okay. I guess what I'm yeah. wondering, hmm, I guess in your belief that you believe that uh, 
let's say a gay marriage, that mm -hmm. that would be something that would be bad and wrong. Correct me if I'm wrong. I, I don't want to misrepresent. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I, I mean, I would say it's inconsistent with God's word. I mean, God's okay. word defines marriages between a man and a woman. If it's inconsistent with God's word, mm -hmm. does that mean that it is wrong? Yes, if it's, in, okay. if it's inconsistent with God's word, it's wrong. It may be legal per the Supreme Court case. Yeah. Uh, but yes, if it's inconsistent, inconsistent with God's word, it would be wrong, and that would be the sin in our lives, like anything wrong, that we got to do 180 from. That's correct. Okay. Mm -hmm. Okay. Hmm. Interesting. Mm -hmm. Okay. I guess if you, if you didn't have your belief in God, mm -hmm. would you still think that a gay marriage is wrong? Well, I have to find my source of truth, right? Okay. I have to go back to my source of truth and ask myself, Okay, if 60% of society is doing it, or 51%, right, it's the majority, mm -hmm. uh, I tend to be one that doesn't go with the flow, as you may see, you okay. know. Didn't have uh, my first alcoholic drink till 26, not because against my religion, personal preferences. Look up my story, you know, it's more of my I, biological I dad either. having alcohol issues and all that. But, yeah, we all have our personal preferences and yeah. Our, yeah. our sources of truth. And so, yeah, if I didn't have God in my life, and, you know... Sin is sin, right? And I wanted to steal, I'd steal, you know, if I wanted to change uh, my gender, you know, that's, you know, it's also based, if majority agrees, maybe I'll go with the flow, right? I don't want to be the unpopular kid in school and get bullied. Okay. I'll go with the flow and that's what. You think there might be a way to determine truth uh, if you didn't have the Bible? Is there a way to figure out what's true and untrue or what's good and bad? Yeah, and, and there, yeah, that, that moral compass, I mean, society has created laws, and there's definitions, and there's, there's books, but every author has their background, they have their story, they have their preferences, they have their source of truth. Yeah. So, which books am I reading? You know, my favorite is the former homeschool kids I was homeschooled, or the Christian school kids. I was under the oppression of my parents in homeschool, or those Christian teachers, and they brainwashed me, but... Then I went to college, and I heard my professor, and it all made sense. Well, you're just choosing to listen to your professor and their background instead of your parents' background. So, mm. it, it, you know, the enlightenment was you changing who you want to follow or believe, if you will. You know, for people who don't like me, then follow me on Facebook. They follow people who may be opposite at me. So, um, back to your question as far as if I didn't have the Bible, um, you know, I accepted Christ when I was 12, and man... Back then, I just try, was trying to be a good person, and I knew there was a God. I was never atheist. I knew there was a God. And to me, as long as people saw good things, and they saw a happy Vanya, and they saw good things, I'd go to heaven because I, I could fake my way to it. But inside, I was I had a heart of stone. I wasn't loving. I wasn't caring. I couldn't say mm. thank you. I couldn't say I love you. I was prideful. I was bitter. I was insecure. And I was accepted okay. Christ at 12, and that definitely changed. Um, but boy, even back at 10, I mean, knowing there was a higher being, I guess just being good and like try to fit the laws and the expectations of the culture, I guess. That would be, and, and go with the flow with the culture, right? You have Hillary Clinton on the floor saying, man between a man and a woman is a senator. And then she's running for president and she's like, hurrah, right? You know, wrap me in a rainbow flag. So then that's a span of 20 years. Well, so I wonder if, so it's, it, it seems like to me, and correct me if I'm wrong, I'm wrong all the time. <laughs> me too, me too. <laughs> but it seems like, the it seems like your sole reason for your beliefs, pretty much the whole post, mm -hmm. I, I think, mm -hmm. would be would be God. Yeah, who if, I am in Christ. Yeah, okay. Yeah, that's my social truth. In God. You're right. Okay. That's that's an accurate definition. Yeah. Would it be Would you be comfortable talking about your belief in God and Absolutely. the reasons why? Absolutely. Okay. Awesome. Absolutely.